The Halloween Jack, he's a real cool cat. No, no, he's a dog. He's a diamond dog. Greetings, groovy people. So sorry to subject you to that, but today I'm in some type of mood. I'm in some type of way. I don't know, man. I don't know what my deal is, but greetings, groovy people. Welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Blue Dragon, and while Halloween was last week, I wanted to spin out one more Halloween video. So here it is, Halloween Jack. Missed opportunity, man. We have Diamond Dogs on vinyl, and we totally should have been listening to that last night. It's It's got a lot of creepy, creepy themes to it. So, But, but anyway, we ended up listening to KDHX's reggae show and played Lost Castle while eating homemade chocolate brownies in the flickering black tapers on our coffee table. So we had some atmosphere, we had some mood, and we had a good time. So, how did you all spend your Halloween? I hope you had a cozy night or did something fun yet safe. Eh, you know, let me know down in the description if you like. Talk about Halloween. Make it live as long as you can. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> like I said, I'm in some kind of mood today, but yeah, I am just going to be babbling with little to no direction this time. The the topics today are the picture in the background and the Comic Fury Halloween Exchange crossover exchange. I should have been working on Saturday, but you know what? I wanted a break. I work every freaking day, so I wanted a break. And as they say, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. I just wanted to say that because it's got Jack, and Jack is the dog in the background. So any kind of Jack I can shove in here, I'm going to. It's Jack of all trades. Yes, okay, I need to stop. Oh my god, there's a Neil Gaiman reference in here somewhere with the Jack of all trades. But, um, yeah, so I decided Word of Wednesday to indulge and just relax and catch all the uh, amazing submissions that we're posting that day to Comic Fury. The 2020 Halloween Crossover Exchange. Link down in the description. So, let's, let, let's, let's back up a little bit. What the fuck am I talking about? Uh, Comic Fury and Tapas 2, uh, you know, they have a lot of um, different events that I really need to get more involved with. But, but Comic Fury, they have a lot of different community events that I've talked about in the past. And every year, one of the members of the community, this, this year and last year, it was uh, Jeremy Seven, but somebody volunteers to host this annual uh, Halloween crossover exchange. And that person will schedule everything, they'll take submissions, and uh, make sure that you know everybody you know, touches base with people, make sure that they've got their stuff scheduled to be turned in on time. But this year, the host, Jeremy Seven, he took charge and did a smashing job promoting, planning, building up hype. He was posting in the thread on a regular basis, posting like music and stuff. He always does a really good job whenever he hosts. Actually, everyone who has hosted in the past that I have participated in, I've seen everyone does a great job hosting because people are are very um, passionate about about this crossover and the other crossovers too. It's always a lot of fun. So essentially, a participant will submit one of their comics or two. Um, he usually will accept two because he's got two comics of his own. And then each participant is assigned somebody else's comic and you gotta keep it secret. That's why I haven't been talking about who I was assigned this year. Just showing y'all my own stuff. But uh, everyone creates either a single image, which has characters from both their own comic and the assigned comic, or if some of us have more time and resources to create short little comics, some of us do that. I, I started out doing like eight pages my first year and quickly realized, holy shit, I need to back this up a bit. And I now try to keep it to be three to four pages. But man, there were some people who got so involved. They had like 10 or 13 pages. They were able to do that. And, and they were all very enjoyable. And the people who did single page images, those you could just see, you know, either way, whatever people are doing, you can just see the love and effort that they put into their pieces. So it was really a great way to interact with the community. But it's also a great way to get introduced to other people's comics. I've actually become a fan of many of the comics that I've been assigned over the years. Uh, my first one was from Dust to 
ruination, but, you know, every time I'm assigned a comic, I try to read as, if I can't read it all, I read as much of it as possible so that I can get an idea and a feel of the characters. But the idea is to engender these good vibes and connections with others in the community and to read each other's comics and have fun and just get the creative juices flowing by having to think outside of your own box and your own style of working. At least that's the spirit that I go into these things, these events. And to me, that's the impression that I get from the other artists, the other participants. So this year, the woman who's part of the Comic Fury zine who helps you know me out with that, she was one of the uh, backup artists because occasionally people will have to drop out. So it's always good to have a couple volunteers and she's always aw an awesome part of the community. You can always, uh, you know, tell her zeal for whatever she's participating in. So links down to Snark Claw's cute slice of life comic, Dear Me. That's, that's one of the ones that I've been reading personally. She's got a couple up there. One of them is, I think one of them is not safe for work. So, hey, my channel's for adults. So if you check it out, it shouldn't be a problem because I only want adults on my channel. No kids here. <laughs> Sorry, try to make it fun, y'all. But same for the host comics. I'm going to put his down in the description also. There were a couple other backup artists. I'll mention this at the end of the video, but Mighty Guy 15 and Why Not Warrior, I think is how it's pronounced. I'll go into more details about that at the end of the video, but lots of people involved and they all have comics. So I highly recommend the comics. Okay, so I've covered what the crossover is. Now what? Hmm, think I'm done talking? Hell no, I could talk all day. Gibber yabber away all I want. Mm. Um, <laughs> what the fuck does yibber yabber even mean? Okay, I mentioned in this video, I card in the upper right hand corner, that this year I submitted The Whimper in the Dark. Uh, this is the first time I've submitted that comic of mine for one of these crossover exchange. Usually I do Dark Horse, which is my free not safe for work webcomic, link down in the description, it's in the manga style. But this year I wanted to do Wind, which is Whimper in the Dark, and that's my macabre doggo comic featuring Jack Dog, as seen in the background, and Julius Cesar Malcolm, pictured in the aforementioned video in the iCard. Wind is a very different project from Dark Horse. This one is a little bit more of a collaboration. I come up with a lot of the storylines, but my partner also will occasionally come to me and be like, I think this would be a cute idea. So th the main goal with this isn't to have like a succinct story, but more so one, have fun drawing my doggos, but also it, it acts as kind of a study in pen and ink technique and washes for me. Last year, I had taken inspiration from the Inktober prompts to create the Almighty Kong arc. I'll reference that down in the description, give you a link to that. But for the most part, I don't really plan on having an overarching story. I just want to have fun and play with ink. And working on this comic also really allows me to try things that may not work or fit very well into Dark Horse's style. But I do want to make it clear that some of these practices and techniques that I've been throwing into Wind, I've been able to find a way to translate it into Dark Horse. For instance, when I made this image that I'm showing right now, it inspired me to add those types of lines in last week's Dark Horse update, which you can view now. Okay, so I really want to push myself to be a better artist. And while I'm the type of person who benefits from sitting in class with instructors, I, like many people, don't necessarily have the resources to further my education. And not only that, but let's be real, although I did have an art background as my education, I specialized in ceramics. So while I'm happy with the illustration work that I do, obviously I recognize I need to continue pushing myself to improve. Realistically speaking, I also am very well aware that my portfolio would not be able to compete with other more skilled artists. So the, the thing that I like to kind of 
make clear is that just because you may not necessarily be able to be accepted or have the resources or funding to get a formal education, that I don't feel should make you give up on something that you enjoy doing. Now, if, if doing a lot of research takes all the fun out of stuff, then by all means, just do whatever the hell you want. But for me, since I feel that I'm fairly determined to follow my passion, but have been subjected several times to various forms of rejection, I find the best recourse is to, you know, don't necessarily give up, just teach yourself, find others who inspire you and support each other. If you want something bad enough, and if through no fault of your own, or maybe in some people's cases, things are their own fault, but if, if you are determined enough, you should not let others detour you from striving towards your passions and striving towards success by your own definition of whatever your own definition of success is. I feel that's a good message that if you are being disbarred from something by society and it's something you're passionate enough about, then you got to build it yourself. And while you're doing it, you should also throw a rope back or down to others who also are trying to succeed. I think that's a good message that is applicable across the board. And if it's something that you feel that you still want to strive towards, you shouldn't let everybody else dictate what you enjoy to do. It doesn't necessarily mean everyone's going to find success doing their passion, but I believe that you shouldn't let others detour you from finding enjoyment in the things that you en enjoy doing, I guess. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, wow. Like I said, I'm kind of winging it this week, and that's what I wrote, so that's what I spoke. <laughs> Um, but anyway, this past month in preparation for working on my submission for the crossover exchange and updating wind for Halloween, I watched a video by an historian specializing in the New Yorker artist Charles Adams. And I learned a lot about Charles Adams. I, I Last year in one of my videos, I talked a little bit about wanting to look more into his art style so that I can be better at creating washes. But this year I learned a couple things. Uh, one, <laughs> that Charles Adams's work on the Adams family was only around 2% of what the majority of his comic art was. And, you know, there were around 13 books or so published specifically regarding the Adams family. I think one of them was published posthumously. Did I say that right? I hope I said that right. That should have been the word of Wednesday. And then the third things that I learned, I learned a lot more than this, but I like to mention the things that stand out to me. But another thing that I learned was that Charles Adams knew and was friends with the actor Boris Karloff, who was the inspiration for the butler in the Adams family. And that butler was later named Lurch. Initially, I guess nobody had any names. They weren't even the Adams family. They were just the witch and different, different labels for the different characters before they eventually were given names for the 60s television series, to my understanding. The more I look into his work, the more I want to really um, check out some books by him and the more... <laughs> I want to rewatch The Addams Family with Angelica Houston, who is one of my favorite actresses. I I love her. And of course, of course, the late great Raul Julia. I love his acting too. Yeah, yeah. I think eventually I'm going to I'm going to rewatch that and maybe once the library start reopening, check out some of Charles Adams's books. Right now I'm just doing online research to um, keep socially distanced. But I think I've rattled on enough for this video. Thanks go out to Jeremy7 for making the Halloween crossover so much fun and for hyping it up and really, really making this enjoyable and keeping us all on schedule. Thanks to Snarkclaw because she's always tackles community projects with passion and care. Thanks go out to MightyGuy15. I read his comic, I'm gonna pronounce this wrong, 
So Kaka on a regular basis when he updates. If if you like Dragon Ball Z, JoJo, One Piece, um, manga like that, you might enjoy his comic. It's done with that uh, that spirit. The other backup artist I mentioned was Why Not Warrior, and I haven't had a chance to read her comic yet. But I, I've kind of peeked at it, and it's clearly manga-inspired, and it has dragons in it. So, you know, it, it's when I get into it, I have a feeling it's going to be up my alley. I'm going to put all of those authors' comics in the description. So if you have time and you're interested, I do recommend you check them out. Let's see here. Also, 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 I want to thank Busty LaRue, who was the person assigned Wind. And they did a phenomenal job on the piece that they submitted, which included her comic and my comic. So I, I think she just did a fantastic job. She works in traditional medium and I, I think she actually does watercolor. And I've been really wanting to find the time to read her comic because it just looks gorgeous. I will have her comic linked down below also. And then also thanks to author Laura Melpsum. <laughs> I know I'm pronouncing that wrong, but they pen Signs of Three. I always love reading their comic. I actually read that on a regular basis just because I like I like their comic. It's a reimagining of Sherlock and Watson's adventures, the, you know, Watson and Holmes. Yeah, it's a great comic and I highly recommend it. Link down in the description. Question of the week. What online community events do you enjoy? Now, if there are people out there who aren't artists, there are all kinds of community events, so it's, I don't feel like it's limited to just art questions. Want to support the channel? One-time donations or monthly patrons? <laughs> I love y'all. Links are in the description for that. Or, or you can like, sub, and do the bell thing. That's free, and if you know me, I dig things that are free in life, so I am certainly happy to receive those as well. <laughs> anyway, peace and love, folks. Fare you well, and keep on talking.